Hello, I'm Matt Bradley, the event director of the Retail Technology Show, and this is Five Minutes With, the bite-sized interview where we chat with some of retail's most influential people. And today I'm delighted to be joined by the e-commerce director of Co-op, Mr. Chris Conway. Chris, welcome. Thanks, Matt. Great to be here. Uh, well, well, I appreciate it. We appreciate having you on board. So I'm going to crack on with these questions because, as, as the title suggests, we've only got five minutes, so um, time is against us. So starting with number one, and as e-commerce director of the co-op, what emerging retail technologies excite you the most? I, I, I think, Matt, it's a really good question. I think because of the really difficult market we're all experiencing at the moment, obviously a high cost of living, uh, high inflation, I think retailers are under immense pressure not to pass on costs to consumers. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think wherever technology can help with that, that that's really what I'm interested in. So I think historically we've used technology to try and cut costs and then make more money. I think at the moment, the the emphasis has changed on us cutting costs to help consumers. So we, we keep customers happy and keep them shopping with us. So the thing I'm most interested in is our operating model and technology that supports our operating model. So when I think about that, I think about the colleagues in store. I think what we've done over the last few years is we've made it incredibly difficult for our colleagues. We've introduced online shopping, different platforms, different applications, different devices. So I think emerging technologies that simplify that, one platform, one easy to use interface for, for colleagues is, is what I'm really interested in. So a big part of our strategy this year is making sure that we only tell colleagues what to do once, we only update them when there's a change once. And uh, I think if we could do that, it would massively simplify our operation, make it much easier for our colleagues, and actually, therefore, make it make the service much better for our customers as well. Yeah, I mean, it's clear from your answer there that, that you and, and co-op strategy is inc incredibly customer centric. Um, I guess, I guess, the next question is, is around the customer experience. Obviously, that is vital to you, and you, you've you, you've illustrated that very well in the, in yeah. the answer to the first question, but. Where do you see the biggest growth opportunity for, for sort of the omni-channel retailer yeah. in ensuring they do deliver that exceptional customer service and customer experience, whatever that means? Yeah, I think I think historically, I think what as as we've landed new channels to to try and address the way that customers shop, I think what we've tried to do is we've tried to optimize each channel each channel in silo almost. So we've got a really good in-store shopping experience, a really good online shopping experience. And what happens there is we've almost become a, di a bit disjointed. And right. I think thinking about the co-op in particular, uh, we've, yes, we've got two, two and a half thousand shops. We've got wholesale operation where we service another 4,000 shops where you can buy the co-op brand. We've also got our own website. And actually, uh, we do a lot of trade now through third party websites like Delivery, Uber Eats, Just the Amazon. Uh, so, you know, I'm working with lots of third parties, lots of different platforms. And what the real challenge for me from a customer experience perspective is, is really making sure that their co-op brand, com co brand comes across consistently across all those platforms online or whether you're shopping in store. So for me, I think there's a real opportunity for all retailers to really get their brand consistency across different platforms and different ways that people shop. And I think if we can do that, there's a real opportunity to hook customers in and keep them shopping again and again. I mean, definitely, I totally agree with that. I just wonder, co-op more than anyone, He's got he's got an enormously diverse audience, doesn't it? The customer is incredibly diverse, and is that more of a challenge as well? It is, and I think we, you know, I think historically we've had an older customer base, and I think that's great, and they're our most loyal customers, and they're real champions for the co-op. But more recently, we've been appealing to students via the student discount, the, the festival pop-up shops that we've been doing. So we've got again, you're right, we've really exploded our our customer base to be really diverse than ever, and that brings its own own challenges but actually it means that if we focus on on the the younger customers in particular especially those that shop multi-channel with us in different ways on different platforms which these uh that group of customers generally do i think we'll get better and better and better and actually as a result of that everyone benefits from, from the changes that we make so yeah but i mean consistency is key really so yeah it doesn't matter where you shop the co-op you can shop through uber you can shop through Deliveroo, you can shop through amazon you're still shopping at the co-op so it's important that you get the right products at the right price with the right experience. Perfect. Yeah, makes sense. Going to throw some curveballs at you now with our informal quickfire questions, if you know the drill. Okay. Back in the day, Chris, would you have been a mod or would you have been a rocker? I'd have been a mod, I would say. Because I, 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 yeah, like, I, like I like the scooter. Uh, I think that's cool. And uh, the haircuts were better. And I, I didn't like tattoos at the time. So right, probably okay. 
Not not into the leather then. Not really, no. no not then not. anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> different, different time. Yeah, different time now. Yeah. <laughs> right. What about? Have you or do you currently have, or have you ever had any nicknames? And and if you have, can you tell us? No, you know, God, no. I I would never. I would never disclose those on the on this platform. <laughs> I think I think people yeah. at work call me a few nicknames, but generally it's to do with my name. So, uh, right. I mean, my name's quite short anyway, and it's not really difficult to understand. But uh, at school and stuff, I was I was I was called Con, Con which uh, right. which which is all right, but uh, it's it's not the best if you if you have a brush with the law. But <laughs> yeah, you know, definitely, man. yeah, yeah. And if you want to sort of get yeah. gay people, it's it's not a massive, yeah. Absolutely, no, 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 definitely. Right, final one on these. If if you were a buffet. Would you go for the continental or the fried breakfast? Dry breakfast, absolutely. All day long. Yeah, I'm, I don't know actually because I'm on a bit of a health kick. But yeah, you know, quick fire round, complete honest truth. I would definitely go for the, the dry breakfast. Absolutely. Yeah, there. All right, mate. Listen, thank Lovely. you for that. Well, we, we've got you speaking at the show, which we're really, yeah. really looking forward to. You've been um, you've been sat on our advisory board as well, and have been uh, incredible in giving us some insights into some of the experiences that's going on in the retail world at the moment, and we are forever in your debt for that but what what are you looking forward to at the show you know i'm obviously i'm looking forward to all the speakers i'm looking forward to meeting as many people as po possible and networking i don't get as much opportunity as i used to to do that uh art the startups as well so i think the startup safari is really interesting and the fact that you're meeting new people who've got innovative ideas that may be doing something slightly differently i'm always open to listening to that so i can't wait for it really excited good stuff, mate. Good, good stuff. And I've got to tell you, you're in for a real treat for the startups this year. I've had a little peek at what they're like, and it is mind blowing. Some of the stuff Amazing. That's coming out. So, um, listen, we're really looking forward to having you. For those people watching, if you haven't already registered, and I know thousands of you already have, click on the link below, join your universe, come and get Retail's Golden Ticket, and we'll see you the 26th, 27th of April, London's Olympia at the Retail Technology Show. Chris, it's been a pleasure, mate, and I'll see you very soon. See you, Matt. See you, everybody. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.